One of the most important aspects of running a, a microgreens business is actually the crop planning. And it actually took me many, many months, actually probably well over a year, to really understand the importance of, of crop planning and how it relates to running an efficient business. So over the years, I developed a spreadsheet which I could use for record keeping, crop planning, recording harvests. Uh, it became a fairly comprehensive spreadsheet. And what I've done is develop that into a package that will allow you to not only do crop planning, but also some financial planning to really understand what the finances and the flow of a microgreens business looks like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna review uh, a version of the, the planner here. This one is already pre-filled out for $125,000 in annual sales. And I'm just gonna go through the tabs here and just sort of give you an overview of, of what the spreadsheet looks like. It, it is available online and I'll, and I'll post a link to it on this workshop. Uh, but I think, uh, I hope what you see when looking through this is the value that a tool like this offers. Uh, it's, it's a fairly big, fairly complicated spreadsheet, but at the same time, there's uh, a lot of notes in there to help you along. And uh, the complicated part about it actually is an advantage because as you work to understand how everything is connected, it not only helps you understand the spreadsheet, but also uh, helps you better understand the business model itself. So I hope you find that that's the case. As I've developed this and have been tweaking it over the, over the years, uh, I found it really helps me understand my business a lot better and uh, help, has helped me make uh, adjustments. So just a quick overview here. I think there's just two important things to, to note here. One is basically whenever you see a green cell, it means this is a place where you enter data. Uh, so this is the place where you're going to be entering the information that's uh, specific to your system. And when you see an orange cell, these are where calculations take place. So you never want to change these. So these are the two cells you're going to see most. Grays are label cells. Blues are cells where you'll see some comments. And in one section, there's some cells that are pre-filled, but you can edit them as well. Uh, the spreadsheet is probably relevant for people doing 100 to 500 trays a week. Uh, and everything uh, is going to be in metric in here. So hopefully you can do the conversion on your own. So I'm just moving along the tabs at the bottom here. So what we do is we start off with our season targets here. And one thing I'll show you on, on this is uh, a lot of the sections have on the left here these collapsible menus. And you see when I click on it, it reduces this area. So some of the uh, worksheets uh, are very large. And so reducing them makes it uh, a little less uh, intense on the screen. So you'll see that as we go through here. So here you're entering a few different things. The first thing you're going to enter is, is what's your weekly revenue goal? How much revenue do you want to generate each week? And to do $125,000 in sales, you need to do about $2,500 a week. I've put in a theoretical maximum capacity for trays of 100, and I can do uh, two harvests a week with 100 trays. So I can theoretically harvest 200 trays uh, per week because I have two harvests. This one is set up to do 50 weeks of production, and I'm going to sort of do a target average trade price of about $18. So I start around there and then can kind of tweak things. Uh, once you have this information in, this stuff starts to fill in. And uh, yeah, you'll see a lot of all the orange just basically auto fills from this information. So what we can see is our potential revenue capacity at that uh, to doing two, uh, 200 trays a week is about $180,000 if we're looking at $18 a tray. So we're not at full capacity of our system by doing this, and that's a good start. So as we move along, what we're doing is we're feeding information into the spreadsheet, which later is going to make planning a lot easier. And this section here, this top section, I'm just going to close the bottom section. This top section here is where you're going to enter your crop information. Now, this information is going to feed cells in the rest of the spreadsheet, so you must fill this out. So here we put in our crops, our sowing rate. And we do this in grams of dry seed per tray. And then we have some, here we're putting in our package sizing. So we have a small package uh, of 125 grams or 40 grams for these. Uh, and then we're doing our pricing for these small sizes. We have a wholesale and a regular price. And then our large size here is 450 to 140 grams, and we have pricing here per pound. And then we have our projected yield. So this you can, there's some figures in here, or over time you're going to understand what the yields for your particular crops are. Um, what I tend to do is uh, always work in small units. 
which means that uh, is referring to the smallest uh, uh, package that I sell within a given given crop. So I use this idea of a small unit equivalent, which is here. So 625 grams of sunflower per tray is is equal to five small retail packages, and that that applies to everything. Um, this section here, uh, and I might just separate this a little bit by uh, with an extra line, is getting into the um, the our seed. So what we want to know here is um, uh, the size of the seed packages we buy and what the price is, and then we get ourselves a cost per kilogram and then our seed cost per tray. So we're already getting a sense of, of what our costs are for this. So this is a very important section to fill out. The spreadsheet uh, has room for 11 crops, and you can see them all there. I just have six in here right now. Next section, if you do farmer's markets, this is just a listing of the markets, your start and end date, and then getting a, the, just the weeks there. So this helps you, one, it ends up being a contact list, so you have all your uh, details in one place. Uh, if you put your fees and stuff in here, you can start to see what your farmer's market fees look like uh, as the season goes on. So for this model, it's about, uh, I think it's around $5,200. So these farmer's markets, again, they're going to feed our, our crop planner uh, that comes up in a few tabs here. Next, we're going to do our client list. We don't have any clients yet, but I just put in some theoretical restaurants, grocers, and maybe some pickup customers. But you can have any types of clients you want. These uh, names that you put in here will also feed our crop planner. And once again, this acts as a, as a contact list. So you would add people to this list, uh, but you would never take anyone off this list. And the reason is um, e either someone's a customer or they're not. But if they cease to be a customer, it's a good idea to keep their contact information in one place. So you can just filter that out so you just have your active client showing here. So one of the biggest uh, worksheets within the spreadsheet is our crop planner. And I'm just going to reduce some of this down a little bit. So this is a very, very big uh, spreadsheet. It's broken down into, into weeks. So week one, and this is our first harvest date. And it goes through, as I mentioned, to 50 weeks. And this one's also set up for a Tuesday and a Friday harvest. So I've just got everything reduced to as little as possible. And I'm just going to open the Tuesday in the first uh, couple of weeks just to give you a sense of the flow of how this uh, worksheet works. So this is uh, where, and I can see there's a little bit of a delay here because it's uh, becoming a very large worksheet. So this is a, a very large worksheet, um, but once you get to know it, it actually becomes fairly easy to work with. So the way it works is we've got our we've got our vendors here, which are feeding from our market and client list we just looked at. Once we uh, have the our, our clients in here, uh, we just we just add them from a drop down menu. I can see Google is still taking some time catching up with this spreadsheet. I added some new calculations over the weekend, and it seems to be bogging Google down. So once we enter our, our market or thing here, we enter our price. Uh, and we enter the, the the size we're talking about. So this is just a quick overview, but at the market, we always do small packages. And so this is small or large. And then we start entering um, how many of these packages we're doing. So on Tuesdays, we don't do any markets at this time of year, uh, but you can see we have some restaurant and grocery clients in here, either large or small bags. And this is basically here is how many units of each crop. So this would be two large bags of sunflower, two large bags of sunflower, four, and then getting into some smaller, so four and eight small ones. You do this for each of your crops. And what happens is this automatically feeds the same column the next week. And so every week now is, is filled with whatever order you put in the previous week. The reason for this is uh, that ensures that you're always sowing at least as much as you did in the past. Uh, in the past week. And what we found is if we didn't do that, we, we sometimes under sowed. So um, yeah, just a quick overview. I don't want to get into too much detail there. So the key here is, is this summarizes things once you have your orders in about how many small and large uh, units you're going to sell as well as any trays and gives you the small unit equivalent here. Our projected yield is is fed from our earlier uh, information, and so based on that, we this uh, calculator is telling us to sow 15.4 trays. Now, what we do is like, we put in our actual trays, and this auto feeds from the estimate, and it just rounds up. You can change this number here. 
and often what I'll do is sew two or three extra um, trays or if you use the buffer uh, here up top and just put that in as too large it'll bump things up a little bit and the uh, calculation will just take a second here because as I mentioned we've just bogged Google down with um, with formulas uh, over the weekend I may have to do some adjustments because this uh, slow calculating is starting to drive me nuts so further down here, uh, as things go, we've got our sewing rate that feeds in. And this also from information we've put in and, and actually comes later in the spreadsheet, we actually know what our production cost here is and what our projected revenue is for that crop. So you can see the calculations done. It's bumped our trays up to 17 because we had a couple of large bags of, of sunflower buffer. Um, another thing to, that's good to put in here is your seed lot. And so you know all the time uh, which lot of seed you're using. And this is really good in terms of uh, tracing anything if you have to do a, a recall or anything. Uh, later, when you've done your harvest, you can put your harvest details in here, and it'll start calculating your, uh, your actual harvest and uh, some of your averages. So this is important information for tracking how accurate your, your model is, how ac accurate your projected yield is, and over time, you can change your yield uh, if you're finding it's not accurate. So same thing applies for Friday if you're doing two harvests a week. And this just repeats every week. And so these are all just collapsed. Um, but yeah, so this is a very, very big spreadsheet. Uh, it puts your sowing and your soaking dates in there, uh, the, 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 um, the length of each crop cycle. And all these cells here with, um, with little, um, you see little triangles in the corner there? That just denotes that there's comments within those cells. And uh, when Google isn't, having trouble doing calculations you can see that the comments come up here and they give you little tips as you go along so this crop planner spreadsheet if you look down here has 39 comments in it so quite a bit uh, and there's just little things there that hopefully help you find your way uh, along so uh, i'm not going to spend too much time on this because it gets daunting just going to move on to our season packaging summary so once you've filled out your crop planner for the season, which you can adjust on a week-to-week -week basis, this just gives you a, a summary of uh, each of your crops and how many small and large units on each of the days uh, you have planned. And this feeds uh, information later in the spreadsheet. Just a nice quick reference there. So now we're moving from the crop planning side into the financial planning side. And what we do here is we start with our, with our overhead costs. And this, these are the costs that most people miss when they're doing their business planning. And you can see the stuff we have in here, mortgage or lease payments, insurance, your website, your electricity, advertising. You know, yes, yeah, so you can see here we have $5,200 in uh, uh, market fees. We've got $1,200 for organic certification. We spend $1,100 a year on paper towels. So these are all costs that are easy to forget about when you're doing a simple uh, financial outlook. And so this really, um, this really uh, is a bit of a reality check, I think. So what happens is, is because we know how many trays we are projecting to grow, um, this is going to break, give us, uh, distribute this overhead cost to each tray. So this basically works out to $3.43 per tray. So this is an important uh, a figure above the seeds and soil, which are the obvious inputs to a tray. This is going to vary, and this is a place where you want to really try and bring those costs down because it does have a big impact on overall um, costs. Moving on to crop and input details here. So sometimes it's easy to break these down. So some of our, uh, we've already done our seed calculations earlier. Soil, sanitizer, and packaging are three other costs that we have. So this is just breaking this down on a per tray basis again, based on uh, figures that you have to input, because soil and sanitizer and packaging are going to cost different uh, prices in different areas. And so you need to do those calculations yourself for the soil and packaging uh, that you're using. So this breaks all that down here and uh, feeds other areas of the spreadsheet as well. So I won't go into detail there. Once again, you're just putting information into the green cells and the calculations are coming out in the orange cells. So once we have all this, um, this does another summary for us. So based on our figures, it looks like uh, we're going to have about $5,100 in soil costs, $6,200 in seed costs, $265 in sanitizer, 
and about $5,800 in packaging. So these are estimates based on our numbers, but remember financial planning is just that. It's planning, it's a model, and it at least gives you a, a very good idea of, of what your expenses are going to look like. So here is where we get into um, our season production totals. So some more summaries here where, where a lot of the stuff is amalgamated together. So once again, we have a tray breakdown and a small and large unit breakdown of each crop at the top here. All the costs we look at here are summarized and then they're applied. And we've got our projected revenue from the crop planner here um, and we have our total expenses here. So we can see based on the information that's in this spreadsheet so far, our projected profit for this year is about $890. Now that may not seem like a lot, but the way this model works is that is your profit after you have been paid for working. So this is an important thing to remember is you need to consider yourself as, as a paid uh, worker in this operation. And we're going to take a look at that at the next section. So this, uh, this uh, total summary is a little premature because there's more data to follow. I just didn't want to hide it too far along in the spreadsheet here. So you can see we make about 13 cents per tray. That is our profit basically in this model. So this is money that goes to the farm and you think of yourself as someone who works for the farm. So you just want to, you definitely want to be profitable. Uh, your, your goal here uh, with profit is at least uh, 10%. And so we want to have much more profit than this because we want to have a buffer uh, to, to reinvest in the, the business. And the more profit there is, the more, uh, the higher the wage we can take, essentially, the more benefits we can, we can offer, things like that. So there's lots of different ways to change this number. And these numbers will change very, very quickly if we go back and we bump the, our, our price from $18 to $19 a pound or we change our seed prices. So as we change things now, this number changes uh, significantly. This here breaks down our, our uh, individual uh, uh, production costs for each crop. The number here is just a little bit different than in our summary there. I think uh, in some of the calculations, things got a little, they're a little different in, in spots, but it's a very close figure. And so, yeah, we basically know our production costs per tray and our projected revenue per tray uh, on average, um, based on the costs here. So once again, this is just a model, but it gives you a sense of, of what it costs to produce things. Now, here we get into uh, wages. So your labor is a huge cost, and, and it, this is often overlooked, or, or the amount of labor that goes in. So the first part here is just uh, setting three different wage levels. And this is because you might have yourself, maybe some people that are working with you a lot, not getting paid quite as much, and then some lower wage workers that are doing more of the grunt work, I call it. Not to be uh, dismissive of the work they do, uh, this is just common to have a, a hierarchy of wages depending on the amount of responsibility you have in a business. This adds uh, extra fees, which include you know, your, your pension plan and employment insurance, and I actually add a 5% um, extra here because uh, there's a lot of time people spend and just don't do anything. So we're just accounting for that in, in our calculations. We've got our numbers here fed from previously, and what this section does is it breaks down all the different sort of steps of the process to understand uh, what things look like on a per tray basis. So for example, if in 60 minutes here, I can prepare 60 trays, and it takes me about 10 minutes to set up and 10 minutes to break things down. It ends up taking me about 1.33 minutes to, to prep a tray with soil, which equals about 27 cents per tray, and that's going to be different for the different wage levels. So if you want to get into this detail, you can. You don't really need to, but this helps you get a sense of, of, of what it's going to cost to do these things. And when you have somebody else doing the task, it gives you a sense of how efficient they're working relative to the pace you can work at. So this here uh, accounts for uh, prepping trays with soil, uh, for sowing trays, I didn't break those down, uh, cleaning and sanitizing trays, and harvesting and packing trays, deliveries, things like that. So this just breaks things down into the different types of activities you do and helps you understand where your, where your time is going, actually. Uh, this stuff is a little geeky and sometimes a little more than you need to do, uh, but I think this is how you get to really know your business is by going through this sort of um, process. So this next worksheet is another massive worksheet, um, which uh, you don't need to visit on a regular basis, but what this does is a breakdown of 
the hours and activities that happen on a daily basis um, uh, and a weekly basis and on a monthly basis. So once again, this is broken down into each month. And I don't do it every week per month. It just assumes a set amount of activities each day in, in the month. So what this does is breaks it down by hour. So this would be from seven to eight. There's four different tasks or four different people who could be working. And then there's four different wage levels, which you can put in here. So you can see all that in here. And this just goes down uh, a bunch of hours. And there's a lot of extra hours. But this might be important if you do a lot of work at night. And then it breaks it down by uh, each day as well. So each day is going to have different activities and different people doing those. So this helps give you a really accurate cost of your labor because it's going to separate tasks. It's also going to separate different wages. So this is done for every month. And the reason we do that is because, you know, in January, February, maybe up to April, you're only doing one farmer's market per week. But in the summer months, you're doing two or three. And so you're, you're, you're adding those hours there. So this accounts for your different um, labor hours uh, each month. So this stuff feeds back to some of those totals we looked at. And this is where you can see, like at $82,000 a year on a $125,000 budget, uh, where a lot of our, uh, our costs are. So you can change these things very much by just going in and, and changing your wages. Uh, and either way, whether you go up or down, that's going to make a big difference. So in the beginning, maybe you, you set yourself a lower wage or you, you have people that can work at a lower wage. Um, but one of the models I've really pushed is, like, can you make this model work when you're paying people an above average wage as well? That's really the sign of a successful business. But you might also be able to hire like some high school kids and, and people who can work at a lower wage and don't need a living wage and value the work experience. So these are all things to, to balance off in, in your considerations. This here is a list of theoretical startup costs, uh, different equipment and stuff you would need. Now, uh, this one's fairly detailed, and it just kind of gives you a good reference list. list. Uh, this one actually assumes you have some growing space, uh, but if you needed to buy like a greenhouse or something, you might add ten or $20,000 to this cost. Um, so, yeah, we've already talked about our, our lease payments or anything like that were included in our overhead costs, so we don't need to uh, um, account for that here. This here is my attempt to um, lay out what the workflow looks like each week. I haven't figured out a very good way to do it, uh, so I've done it in two ways. Uh, this top version here is just sort of looking every day at what the tasks are and giving each task its, um, its own uh, sort of uh, color and, 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 uh, and row. So you can see Sunday we're just soaking crops and doing crop maintenance. Monday, we're soaking and sowing crops, we're uncovering crops, we're prepping trays, we're doing crop maintenance, and we're prepping labels. So lots of activities on Monday. Tuesday, we're doing harvest and delivery, some more sowing for our shorter cycle crops, and then most days have crop maintenance. So this is sort of a workflow that looks like, uh, and it's basically the same tasks every week on the same day. This stuff rarely, rarely shifts. Here's another way to look at it, just another sort of uh, format. I did it in two formats because I find people just have different ways of looking at things, and by offering different ways to look at things, it, it serves more people. Just going to collapse those things. Let's just stare at that anymore. We can ignore that. Uh, a couple other things here. So that's the bulk of, of the even here. This is just some sort of good reference stuff. This is just a little chart taking its time loading here on a sort of uh, pricing on one side the number of clamshells or small units we're getting per tray, and then what that looks like for pricing. So if we have clamshells we're selling at $3 each, and we get seven per tray, that tray is worth $21. Uh, you know, if we have pricing about $6 uh, per clamshell and we're getting seven per tray, that tray is worth $42. So I've highlighted this area in here as sort of the area where you're most likely uh, to find yourself uh, and also what you're trying to do is you don't want to price your, your product too high because that's going to price you out of a lot of markets. So that's really going to depend on the model you're, you're trying to achieve. This here is just a chart based on the food peddlers of sort of what um, hours look like on a, on a, month, on a, a monthly and, and uh, weekly or daily basis. So you can see Tuesdays and Fridays are, are more hours because these are the days when we're doing harvests. 
a bit more on Saturdays when you've got markets. Uh, Thursdays and Mondays are in the mid-range because you're doing your sowing, and you can see Wednesdays and Sundays are days when there's not a lot of activity. You can see these shift varying on the month, and that's going to depend on your volume more than anything. So this might be helpful. This is a, a visual breakdown as well, just sort of coloring. The darker colors are higher numbers. The lighter colors are nor lower numbers. Uh, so yeah, it just gives you a sense of what your hours might look like um, through the season. This is just a calculator here to help you with, uh, if you want to buy seed and you want to know how much seed you need for the year, you can calculate that here. And then when you do make a purchase, you can archive them here. So you can just keep a track. So you can do most of your recording of most of your uh, operational stuff here. And, and record keeping is crucial when you're going on an annual basis and wanting to know what was happening last year at this time. Uh, this last one here is a list of uh, sanitizer rates for uh, different crops. And so this is just basically for however number of trays you're sowing and whatever your sowing rate is, this just does a calculation if you're doing uh, either a bleach sanitizing or sanidate in this case, which is uh, a, a parasitic acid. So all all of these things are adjustable. It, you know, you can you can put in your own uh, you can put in your own uh, sanitizers, your own figures. All all this stuff is modifiable. Um, but once again, if you start changing the orange cells, because a lot of things feed each other, you could be uh, in for some trouble. If you don't know uh, Google uh, Sheets very well, there's always the, the version history, which means if you make a, stay, a mistake, you can always go back to a, an earlier version and reset that one. So, um, so yeah, that's an overview of this spreadsheet. And as you can see, there's a lot of information in here. It can be very intimidating. And the first time you go through it, it's gonna take hours. It's gonna take days, if not weeks, to sort of get to know things. But once you go through and start working this out and, and working out your model, uh, it becomes a lot easier and it really gives you a more clear picture of what your business is going to look like, what your potential revenue is, and, and more importantly, what the, the range of expenses are. Uh, and obviously what you want to do is maximize your revenue, keep your expenses down, and this allows you to sort of play with those different numbers to get a sense of where can you make the most difference and, and, and make those adjustments. So I hope you found that useful. It's a long introduction to a very large worksheet. I will have some webinars coming up on this. And as I mentioned, you can already uh, buy this online at urbanmicro.ca uh, slash crop dash planner. And I will put a link in the comments section as well and in the description. So I hope you found that useful and uh, not too exhausting.